Chef Kev D here. You guys have seen me on NBC and the Food Network. A couple seasons of Vino Live. Um, we are coming at you with some fun holiday cocktails and holiday recipes. And we're doing a classic today, which is a take on a New Orleans crab cake, which has been around forever and ever and ever. But it's one of those things around the holidays that makes you feel like home, right? As always, I'm going to bring on our resident wine expert here at Innovations, Cassandra. How are you doing today? Oh, hello there. Hi. Hi, Chef. Good to see you. So what are we making today? So we're going to do my take on a New Orleans crab cake. It's an old school favorite. Uh, we're going to make it a little smaller, a little different than the, the big jumbo ones that you usually see in a steakhouse. This is more for like an amuse-bouche or an appetizer. You could do a big tray of them for the holidays and stuff like that. Since okay. we're in December, Christmas is coming, New Year's is coming, this is a great one for me. All right. Sounds good to me. So we got two pans going. We're going to get them warm. We're going to do like a six to seven, get them nice and warm. Um, and we're going to start with our crab cake mixture, okay? So we have some this panko here. Mm -hmm. You can use the, which is a Japanese style breadcrumb. You can use the seasoned ones. You can use the plain ones. Totally up to you. But we all know the panko is the best. Yes. It gives it a nice crisp. It, yeah, it, it, it's. Uh, it's not like chewing on a piece of bread. Like right. If you use the Italian regular breadcrumbs, uh, it gets very dense. These are nice and light and airy. So we have our crab right mm -hmm. here. This is jumbo crab. You can use a mix of jumbo and special and leg, whatever you want. If you're making a big batch, just a chef tip, it's cheaper to get one can of the lump and one can of the special, which means it's just from other parts of the crab. And then it's going to be about half as expensive. So we have our crab in here. We have our panko in here. Um, we're going to take a little bit of mayonnaise. So what makes it New Orleans style? So it's going to be a little spicy. I'm going to use some cherry peppers in here. And we're going to make a tomato ragu with it, as opposed to like the New England style you see with like a remoulade or tartar sauce. Um, this is going to be a little different, a little spicier. It's going to have a little kick. So we have whole grain mustard, mayo, crab, our panko. And we're going to give that a good mix. And... We're going to add a couple eggs. This is going to bind it up nicely. Yeah. So, Chef, I've got to be honest with you. I don't know what crab tastes like. So what? I can't eat it. You can't eat it. Well, no. So I've never had a crab cake, let alone a New Orleans style crab cake. Right. So, I mean, that's common today with everybody that has allergies and all right. the things that are going on. So you could make this with a scallop. See, I do this. Um, I do like a salmon burger. Yes. So similar kind of process. It's not spicy. I do like cilantro. Um, but similar where you chop up the fish and the eggs and the mayonnaise. So that's kind of my seafood to go to. But. Yeah, so you could do a salmon cake just yeah. like this, same setup, uh, and you could do it a larger mm -hmm. and make it a sandwich. All right. Uh, but the this crab particularly, this is from Maine. This is nice and sweet. Cool. Um, you can, it's a little buttery. It's kind of like a lobster but not as dense. So it really matters where you're getting your, your crab from? Sure. And uh, So we have the mix that we made already. Right. Um, while we're going to let that sit just for a minute and let those flavors bind, and we're going to start on our spicy tomato ragu. All right, sounds good. So we're going to start with a couple chunks of butter. We're going to let that go, and a pinch of garlic, okay? And we're going to saute that garlic up nice. And we have a Roma tomato here. So we don't want the seeds, we don't want the stem, so what we're going to do is almost like we do with a red pepper. We're just going to do one of these. Take the middle right out. That's fantastic. And then, I've never seen that before. And it's not as watery. You're not going to get those juices and the seeds. Wow. And we're just going to run a knife over it and dice. So our garlic is nice and toasted. We mm -hmm. want it to get caramelized and not brown. Not too brown. Just a little caramelization. We're going to throw our tomatoes right in there. And now, I'm, I mean, it's vino lost, so we have to have a wine. Right. So I did my best today, granted everything, um, you know, people have told me how great crab tastes. Mm -hmm. um, so I figured you can't go wrong with a Prosecco. So I have an Italian Prosecco that we retail here at Vinovations. 
Um, any sort of bubbly with seafood is just always a quality pairing. And then something a little fun, even though standardly a lot of Chardonnay goes really well with seafood, I picked out um, a Moldovan wine that we also have. And this is a grape barrel called Viorica, which is actually a Moldovan word meaning butt. Um, but it's actually got a really cool um, taste profile. It's more of like a sweet apricot and scot kind of flavor. Um, so it's got some nice zippy lemon zest. Um, it's got a lot going on. It's very different from your standard Italian style wine that I've been talking about lately on Vino Live. So I think that'd be a really solid pairing for the crab. You want to taste? Yeah, let's taste it. I mean, we have to. Tell me what you think. That's going to be perfect with the spiciness, the butteriness of the crab. Good. It's going to be perfect. So our ragu is starting to soften up. We're going to hit this mm -hmm. with a little salt and pepper. We're going to get, let that go a little bit and let that soften. In the meantime, for our crab cakes, we have a hot saute pan, yep. some oil, and then the secret thing here is a scoop, right? You're going to make the perfect crab cake every time. Gotcha. And I did you some, put this in the refrigerator to bind it all together? I did it. I just put it, I just mix it together and set it aside Great. so it would tighten up a little bit. And we have some of our panko, our clean panko, mm -hmm. just in a dish here set aside. And this is a one ounce scoop, right? And you're going to take your crab cake mixture and just go right in there. And all we want to do is coat the outside. Like we said, we don't want it to be some dense, like, burger type situation. Right. We want it to be nice and light, but you don't want it to be too moist either. So we're just going to coat the outside, and we're just going to form a cake, just like this. It's a great little bite. Like a nice little popper. That's perfect, perfect for holiday parties. Right in there. And we're going to do three is a lucky number, right? So we'll do three for this appetizer. If that, That'll be good for one person. If you want to do more, you could do it on a big, long plate with six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. But we're just going to do three for our show today. And so we just coated the outside with, the outside with a little bit of panko, and we're just going to saute that a little bit. Okay. And we want to get that golden brown on the outside. For a ragu, uh, now we have our New Orleans, New Orleans style uh, cherry peppers. Oh. And we're just going to run a knife over there, roughly the same size as your tomatoes. And now, again, personal preference, totally up to you on how spicy you want it. Mm -hmm. A pinch will make it very spicy. Like, that'll be a good kick right there, so that's perfect. We're just going to saute that up. Another little pat of butter and a little pinch of salt and pepper. And we're going to let that cook down a little bit. And we're going to check on our crab cakes, see how they're getting nice and caramelized there. So for this, they're small enough where you can finish them in the pan. But what I did was... Again, I just tossed them in the oven. Voila! Then we have our three perfect mini crab cakes there. So, um, we're also going to just take some fresh parsley. A lot of chefs don't use it, some do. I like it. It does have a nice flavor and gives it a nice fresh flavor and also some color. I'm not one to just throw. A chunk of parsley on the plate. I'll, I'll use it in the, as an ingredient if it elevates the dish a little, which Absolutely. this will. This will look nice and green and fresh. Um, and so our ragu is almost there. And then as far as other wines that we could pair with this, I mean, you could do reds with this. It would stand up to the spiciness, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like I've said in the past, Pinot Noir is always a really nice, um, very like light body kind of go-to. Or a French Gamay is also a good option. Um, like I said, I'm not familiar with this kind of food profile, but for any sort of seafood that I've done out in restaurants, um, even like a Nebbiolo, Barbaresco, those lighter varietals are very friendly to fish. So that's what I would say. Perfect. So we're going to take our ragu right in the center of the plate mm -hmm. and make a nice little pile there. And we're going to take our crab cakes, set them up like this. Again, if you want to do a long appetizer style with a big um, stream of the ragu and then 20 crab cakes on it for a big platter, you can. Um, but for this, so we're just going to take a little bit of our rainbow microgreens. Now, if you want to get really fancy, you can put a dollop of creme fraiche on there, because uh, that'll go great with the wine as well. But mm -hmm. that's a, a super simple version of a New Orleans style crab cake. All right. Cheers. Now, if you could have crab, you'd want one of those. I, I right? still want one right now, actually. <laughs> So, again, Vito Live, Chef Kevin D, Cassandra. Cassandra. Happy holidays. Cheers.